Well, welcome to this live streamed skylet from Emerald Hill Skies. We're out here on the outskirts of Louisville, Kentucky, and tonight we've uh, tried to change up a few things with our EAA observing uh, routine. EAA, of course, is electronically assisted astronomy. One of the things we wanted to demonstrate tonight is the routine of using APT, astrophotography tool for autofocusing. But a second thing we wanted to demo is this new, I guess it's, uh, I guess you'd call it a night vision camera. Uh, I guess one would use it for, I guess, security or any kind of uh, web, well, not really webcam, but but some kind of a an app that would capture a camera view. And what you're looking at is our our scope at night. And it's amazing that the only thing we have trained on the scope is a tiny red astronomy light. But using this Wise Cam 3, Wise Cam version 3, you can see what a brilliant light it sheds. The next thing we'd like to do is go to APT now. And it is going to look weird here as I go there. And I just want to give you a report as to how it's been going using the autofocus routine. This is version 3.88. It's a brand new version with APT. It's been out for about a week as we make this video anyway. So this is my first time to get a chance to try it. Uh, I am kind of enjoying trying to figure out how to focus this Rasa 8-inch uh, scope. It's uh, F2, so it has a very, very narrow uh, field of view for focus, very narrow uh, depth of field, I should say, for focus. And so I've been trying to find a better way than using a Botanoff mask because the Botanoff mask approach has just been so, uh, I guess, average. You know, the results have just been average. So I've been experimenting with things like Nina and APT. Uh, here you can see my my... This is, of course, my first night to try this. And the first time I did a, an autofocus routine, I got something that looked a little more like a hockey stick. Uh, in other words, there were points along here and then it shot up. So then I used this calculate backlash choice. And it went through a long routine. And when it was done, it told me that the backlash should be... Um, 63. So I went to the um, focuser settings and I just put 63 in the inwards focuser backlash and the outwards focuser backlash. Now I don't know what else I should be changing on these settings. Like I say, this is my first time to try this, uh, this version. But once I had set up that 63, the results changed dramatically. And you can see the result I, I got this time. All you do is you just say um, uh, you want to use the HFD, which is half flux diameter. And as you can see, APT says it tends to give better results. I chose the algorithm of the better of two uh, passes. And I don't know if that's the best or not, but I thought, well, why choose the middle of two? Uh, that's just some kind of an average. And I want the best of a couple of passes, you know. So uh, then I clicked run, and you can see what it's done here. It's these are the the lower end focuses. Now this middle, that's a wild spike there, isn't it? And then this is the the other side, and it likes 99.57. Now this is a about uh, 50 stops different from what it had liked before. Now you can see the stars I picked, and I don't know whether these are good stars to pick. This looks like a double here, so maybe that wasn't a good one or not. I don't know. But uh, you can now pick the stars that you want to try. When I chose this, I can tell you that that double wasn't resolved. It was a a bit of like a donut circle is all with the best focus I had chosen before through uh, things like Nina. 
So let's do this. Let's make a note of this result, 99.57. I'm going to go over in a window that you probably can't see. And I'm just going to write this down. Uh, 99, was it 5.7? Yeah, 99.5.7 uh, after set backlash to 63. The other thing I'd like to do is um, now run this again with maybe a different set of stars. That's what I kind of like. You know, with Nina's autofocusing, it just autofocuses the entire screen full of stars. And I don't know if that's working very well for the my Rasa in its current condition. I've got some issues in the corners. And I've got a, a an Arteski filter holder on order, and it should be in in the next few days. Uh, that is a little bit more rigid, you know, and, and so I'm hoping that I'll get rid of some of these, uh, what you might call egg-looking stars in the corner of my image. So I don't really like the fact that Nina makes you choose the whole, Nina by default chooses the whole screen. I like this idea that you're just choosing stars that you want. And it turned out that this box was okay. They didn't move around a lot. And I like it that this one looked like a donut at first. And uh, then when I got done with focusing, now it's resolved that into what looks like a double star. I like that. So why don't we go out to, um, before we change this focus, it should be set on 99.57 now. So let's go maybe over to something like uh, our our targeting software. Um, I should be able to switch to that and then let you look at it fair and square. Yeah. So let's go to our targeting software and let's look at a galaxy that's... Here's one I just had looked at earlier in the night. So let's go back to it. This is NGC 5907. So let's slew to that. Um, Slewing to coordinates. As I Slewing that, complete. Oh my, that was very fast, wasn't it? So, uh, almost not worth changing over to the scope view. Let's see. Let's go to... Um, uh, sharp cap. Where is sharp cap? I've lost... Here we go. Here's sharp cap. Oh, and I need to go to Nina first, don't I? And unhook the camera there. Uh, so now let's go back to sharp cap. Let's put you in sharp cap. Okay, I'm going to change the camera, turn the camera on here. By the way, tonight I'm connecting to the camera and the focuser. Um, and is that all? It seems like there's one. Oh, and the mount. The camera focuses on the mount through a USB hub that I've got uh, actually mounted now to the scope for the first time in my observing history. And then I'm using a 30, is that right? 30 meter, is it just 20 meter? 20 meter, I guess. 20 meter cable that runs the USB 3 uh very fast, high-speed USB 3 and the USB 2 signals all on one cable, and it is working out to 30 meters. Uh, I'm sorry, 20 meters. Uh, what was I doing now? Oh, I, I connected the camera here in SharpCap now. So now I'm going to get the... Uh, it's NGC 5907. NGC 5907. And let's do the um, plate solve just to make sure that that galaxy is centered in the frame. It's a very small galaxy. I'm zoomed in at 100%. Uh, let me go back out to auto. wonder if it'll solve that. I don't remember if I'm zoomed in at 100% if it solves in, in sharp cap or not. Doesn't look like it's going to, does it? No, I think, oh, it did. Sinking to coordinates. And I was only 
slewing Sle complete. One degrees off anyway. All right, so we've got our our name here, NGC5907. Let's start our live stack, and let's clear that from the last view just to make sure. While that's stacking, a couple of frames. Um, I I just want to say another word about this uh, cable. You know. My goal is to be able to get inside the building, uh, our prayer center and atrium here at Emerald Hills, where we're, we're viewing Emerald Hill skies. And I was so close tonight to having that arranged. It's just that I was trying to daisy chain together two of these 20 meter cables. And apparently you can't do that if you don't hook up an external power supply to the active USB cable. So I think I'm very close. I think what I'll do is order a couple of those little power supplies, but they're not expensive. I think it'll just be like a little a little DC voltage power supply, five volts or something, and power these and see if that works. But right now it's saying too many USB hubs by running those daisy chain together. I looked at the fine print and it looks like that these, these particular kind of uh, active USB cables uh, are are only going to work if um, if apparently boy, I'm looking at the screen here and it doesn't look like it's changed the scene. That's really odd. Anyway, it's only going to work if um, it's only going to work if it's powered. That's what I saw in the fine print. Let me get you that um, model number of that USB cable in case you'd like to try that for your own scope. Because now we know, don't we, that you can use one of them without an external power supply. And you can go out to 20 meters. So that cable is a trip light 20 meter USB 3.0. And the model number on it is U. 330 20 meters. I'll put that in the description of this uh, live stream. I was just looking at the live stream and it's kind of odd because it looks like that in the live stream that it's stuck on the view of just the the scope and that would be so weird if that were the case. So let me look back. Sure enough, it looks like it's stuck. Why would that be live streaming the view of the scope the whole time? So what I think I'll do is um, I think I'll go to my phone here and I think I'll I'll try to tune in to this stream and just see. Oh no, it looks like it's working okay. So that is just a kind of a weird illusion then that um, that it's only showing the scope. Um, so back to uh, SharpCap. Now we stacked nine frames. So let's zoom in. And what this will do, oh, by the way, let's do some tuning here first. Let's tune our colors a little bit better. There we go. And then let's uh, put this black right around there. In fact, I think we're going to live with that. Maybe we'll we'll bring this red down a little bit. Boy, that did not uh, tune well, so maybe I brought the red down too much. Bring it down just up there. There we go. Now let's put that black right there. And now let's zoom in to about 50%. Yeah, look at this. This is NGC. 5907, but what I'd like you to notice is this, see these little tiny star points. Now, let's go in at 100% and just, it does look like that these stars are a little bit enlarged, but look at these tiny ones. Maybe that's just because th that's what you get when you zoom in with it. This is an ASI 2600MC Pro. Um, 
we do have this gain set. What do we what do we got this gain at 200? That should be okay. I'll tell you what. Let's pull this down to 100. And let's go at 30 seconds with some subframes just to uh, see if we can improve some of that crane in the back, the noise that we're seeing. And but look at some of the little tiny star points now, little tiny points that we're seeing. So I think at 100%, that just might be okay. I think this is a usable, a usable view of that galaxy. We're looking at it edge on. You can see the bright core. And look, some of these stars are either uh, stars that are visual, visually in front of the galaxy, or they're actually in a star-forming region of the galaxy. And look at the the fine filaments of the arms, the spiral arms, you know, the dust out there at the edge. Um, I think this is turning out to be well. This is a very small galaxy, NGC 5907. Why don't we go over to our... Um, uh, let's see, to our planetarium program. NGC 5907. Yeah, this is such a small galaxy that, um, what, does that let you see it now? Is that, yeah, that's letting you see it. Just so you can get your, your bearings with where we are, there's the Big Dipper. So if you kind of look at it, it's off the front of the handle of the Big Dipper. And this is the field of view of our Rasa. It's our Rasa field of view. So it's, it's, we're having to zoom way in to the field of view. And that's kind of the Hubble image that they're showing us, you see, which is, you know, it's a beautiful image. But look how it's even a little bit fuzzy and out of focus. Are you seeing this? I just want to make sure you're... You're seeing this okay. Yeah, you should be seeing this okay. Uh, once again, if we go to the info for this object, there is an audio tour. Let's uh, let's listen to that audio tour. NGC 5907 is a faint edge-on galaxy high in the northern sky of Draco and near the border with Butes. It looks like a tiny smudge in 200 millimeter telescopes, and some more details can just be seen in larger telescopes. Yet the contrast of this target is poor. Moonlight, city lights, and other factors detracting from a very dark sky will all combine to make this galaxy hard to spot, or even not to be seen at all. Two other faint galaxies are in the same low power field. Now what I like about that is uh, the narrator makes it seem like it's going to be a, an impossibly difficult object. And, you know, keep in mind we're at Bortle 5 or so here on the outskirts of Louisville, so there's a big light dome from the city lights of Louisville. We are running the Celestron LP, the Celestron Light Pollution Filter, in our RASA, but I think this does, uh, you know, let us realize what EAA, Electronically Assisted Astronomy, can do with a very difficult to pick out object. The other thing we wanted to do was get a sense of what our focus looks like. And remember what he said, it's very, very difficult to see any detail at all. And we're seeing some pretty good detail. Um, let's just back off for a second and, and take this all in. I think that's actually pretty good detail. Now you're seeing this nice bright core and then look at all those dust lanes. Now again, I have trouble knowing for sure what I focus on, but look, there's a, a visual double or an actual double star. I think they're just slightly, slightly some of them, but that could be that I have too much, too much gain going on, couldn't it? See, I'm exposing for these filaments, so we're overexposing those stars. I honestly think this focus did okay. I, I kind of like the way APT did the focus, and that's really what we were after in in this uh, little exercise. We're really talking about how the cable did, how the new 
uh, scope cam did and how the autofocus did. So we just went here to SharpCap sort of as a proof case that the focus really looks okay on such a small, difficult to pick out galaxy. So let's, while we're here, let's go ahead and save this. And you know, the other thing let's do is let's save a, um, a screenshot of it, which makes it nice for our um, targeting software. Also lets us do observing. This is 95 NGC 9507, right? Is that right? NGC 5907, sorry, NGC 5907, and it might be interesting for you to compare these two images. Let's go back to our, our targeting, targeting software, and let's do a new observation here. And this was um, second observation after focusing in APT version 3.88. And we'll go ahead and attach the screenshot and NGC 5907. It's a much better view. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it for sure, that was the original view, if you can see from earlier in the night. Now what we'll do is we'll change to the new one, NGC 5907, and say focused. Um, Um, well, I don't know in that, in that tiny version, you can't see a big difference, can you? But, um, no, because I really zeroed in. I was, it was a bigger enlargement, so it's not really going to show it off. But, um, back in SharpCap, I think you really can see, uh, that, we're enlarged at 100% here. I think this focus is working. So I would encourage you to go to APT and give this new version 3.88 a try. APT, I'll put the link down in the description where you can get it. Um, it's gonna run you about $22.58 US. $22.58. US. And I think you could try it as a trial version and not have to pay that at first and just see if you like it. So I think that's worth it. Um, again, we're talking about um, what you do here is you just click run. Now let's remember what this looks like. And I don't know if the fact that we're pointed at this star field, um, I don't know if now that we've changed, if I'll have to re, yeah, I'll have to reconnect the camera over here at uh, APT, won't I, and take it out of sharp cap. So let's end, let's end in sharp cap, the live stacking and disconnect the camera there. Now back over in APT. Um, let's connect to the camera. And it remembered. And I think this is a live view, isn't it? I'm not too familiar with Sharp, Sharp Cup yet. Well, the exposure is 
five seconds at three hundred. Hmm. Okay, now we're getting, we're resetting our view for sure, one way or the other. So hopefully it will. Guess we could do auto exposure. Oh, there we go. Now what we can do now is is do which stars we want to see. And I I don't know how how you guys would like to decide. Let's just do these three here. Sound good? Now what is that big circle there? I have no idea what that is. That star just looks too big, doesn't it? Uh, but it, it's definitely, I guess we could try this. Let's try these. Now we just click, um, trying to make this so we can see everything. Are you seeing this okay? Yes, you are. Okay, so let's try this. Now you just click run. Please stop the live view and use the shoot button to frame the focusing star. Okay, so you stop the live view and you use the shoot button. I guess this is where if you're wanting to be upset with, you can say shoot. Um, is that all the stars we're seeing? Boy, um, the exposure doesn't look too convincing here, does it? I wonder if we go to this and put this on automatic and then close live view and then use shoot. Uh, look at that exposure. Sets exposure value to use when shoot. So it's one fourth. So that's not long enough. Let's make this five seconds and shoot again. There we go. Well, thanks for letting me learn that. Now let's just now we can pick our star field. Like I say, I like that better than um, Nina, which does the whole frame. You can pick your star field, so I'll just pick those five or six stars. Um, now you just hit run, and it's starting the the routine. So down here it gives you feedback as far as what's happening, and in here it tells you in this aid status tells you what it's doing out of. 20 different exposures it's going to take. Now look how the stars are turning into donuts because, you know, it's throwing it out of focus to find the outlying margins of the half flux diameter of the stars. And so as I understand this half flux diameter, what it does is it it sizes up a an image of of each star and in, in our case we chose six stars so it sizes up an image of those six stars and then it automatically drops down to half of the flux in other words till those stars are half as bright uh, so to speak, and then it it measures the diameter of the star at that half flux uh, level. And what it tries to do is, it, based on the theory that a really, really, really focused star will be a pinpoint, 
it tries to lower the, the half flux diameter to the lowest possible reading. And you can see right now at this current frame, I think what it's saying is that it's about 0.56 half flux diameter. There it went to 0.62. So see, we're out at the edge of, of uh, what, what is critical focus zone. The best read it got, it found a 0.39, and it's going to go back to that at the end. If it can't find a better over on this end of what's going to be the parabola. Now, I don't know yet w why it's doing this. See, I, I'm still learning the routine. That could be that I don't have my, what would that be called? Your your interval of how many stops you want to run. Maybe I have it set too low or something, too small. Another theory is that could be that I don't have the backlash set correctly yet. Um, but, but what we are at least seeing is we're climbing up to a bad focus on this end of the focus range and we climbed up to a bad focus on this end of the focus range. Somewhere here in the middle, it's going to decide that it liked that best, that it liked that focus best. So even though I don't have this figured out all the way yet, we're already getting this parabola or hyperbola. I guess in this way, it's a hyperbola fit. And sure enough, it liked 99.97 on this run. Now, you remember last time I wrote down what it found. Let me go back to my note that I made. Uh, the last time it found 99.57. So it is a little tiny bit different. So what it's doing now is it's running another pass at the entire routine. And during this second run, it'll compare its results. And then once it's done with this run, it will take the lower, in other words, the best focus of the two. Now, right now, the, the measurement to beat is 0.39. And so all during this, this second pass, and I wonder is the second pass represented by a different color set of dots? And you guys that are good at seeing colors, you can probably tell me better. Are some of these red, I bet? So who knows but what maybe, or maybe it's the circled ones. Maybe the second pass are represented by these. That's what it is. The second pass are represented by these circles. And We'll have to look up what the red ones stand for. Maybe that represents the focus points on the second run. I don't know. But all those uh, all those color coatings are not real friendly to me because I'm not real good with colors anyway. Uh, red could just mean that it was outside the range. Who knows? But we're seeing now that the second pass, it's making these little round... Cheerios, the second pass through. So in a way, I think you could try this on your scope. You could download APT if you have a camera hooked up to your scope. And instead of trying Nina for your autofocus, instead of just using some one of the focus assist tools in SharpCap, none of which are totally automated, you could download APT and try this now because this is completely automated now. I'm not uh, I'm not pushing any buttons at all, and I I like this for you guys who are astrophotographers because you could now insert this routine in APT in the middle of an entire uh, astrophotography run. You know your plan. You could you could have four targets set on the night, and you could decide to do an autofocus routine in APT between every target. And maybe using uh, a sequence generator 
uh, Pro or whatever to do that already. And it, it does, I think, an autofocus routine. But if you're not using Sequence Generator, then you might want to try APT because APT would be definitely less expensive. Okay, so it's finished the second run. And I, I think 0.39 is still the best thing that it found. It is calculating now, isn't it? Look at this, calculating. I like the fact that this is very, you know, mathematical. It's not just depending on you to guess. It's making the final move. And it decided on 99, 97 the second time. Yeah, that means it's done. And um, where does it tell us where it landed? That's not very fun. It doesn't. Oh, maybe down here somewhere, you think? Autofocus and better of two. The current position is the better, the better one. 99, 99.78. Yeah, 99.78 was the better the better position, 99.78. So let's compare that again with what we had. 99.78 the second time. So you know what I'm I'm doing now on my own. I I'll want to go back to SharpCap, and uh, what I want to do in SharpCap. Whoops! I got to go to APT first and disconnect the camera. And um, I'm going to connect the camera here again. And then, let's see. We didn't move off this target, did we? So let's just start live stacking again. But we should reset the stack. Um, what I'm going to do is just visually compare, is there any noticeable difference in the focus, you know? And who knows if we'll see any. Uh, there's our first image live stacking in. Just, oh, that's at 100%. I mean, keep in mind, this is actually the view of the Rasa. So it looks very... It looks like there are zillions of pinpoint stars there. They, they look very, very pinpoint. It's only when we, we zoom in at 100% that you get some of these overexposed stars. And that's just because we're, we're exposing for the filaments in the galaxies, in the galaxy. So you can see how with two frames, we don't have as good a view of the galaxy. I think you get the idea now. This is what we're going to have to do in order to um, to really, really figure out if APT is working for us. We're going to have to um, just tune up our reds here a little bit. Maybe pull a little bit off the blue, I think. Because it's sticking that blue out in the middle of nowhere, too, isn't it? That's just odd. Um, brighten that up a little bit with our mids, but not so much that we get all that grain. We don't want all that, all that noise in the picture on our whites. Those blues are kind of odd. So I like this. I like the fact that um, this autofocus routine is showing us this these very, very fine pointed stars, very, very low magnitude. Who knows what those are? I mean, those for all I know, it could be 19th, 19th magnitude stars, 18th magnitude, maybe. Okay, well, I think we'll end this live stream now. I just wanted to kind of share with you my journey here in understanding uh, APT's new um, autofocus routine. I wanted to share with you the good news that the, the cable does work uh, at least out to 20 meters. 
if we want it to work out beyond that, then we're going to have to get those power supplies. And uh, that's not the end of the world, you know. Those power supplies won't be much, so that's good news. I wanted to share with you this Wise Cam version 3. And let me tell you one more time, because I told you that very quickly. The image you're looking at right now of this, um, of this view of the scope is this Wise Cam version 3. And believe it or not, these cameras are just 20 bucks. Um, they plug in to some kind of power supply at your mount, either USB or I have it plugged in actually to the 110 that I ran out to my little power box uh, that I use to power all of the 12 volt uh, devices. Uh, and and so I, I just have the camera plugged in. It comes with an AC adapter as well in the box for 20 bucks, if you can believe that. Then it is full color, but what I have running here is the smallest uh, red astronomy light you can imagine. And that red astronomy light is so dim, uh, you wouldn't believe it. Um, then what we do is we connect it to your Wi-Fi using your, your for instance, an iOS device, because you, you can't use this wise cam version 3 as a webcam um, it, it only functions as an app in your in your android or your ios devices so i have it on an ipad i have it paired with an ipad you know over wi-fi so it's the ipad is viewing it and then i use this little utility called reflector version 4 um, and it wasn't very much it was like 15 dollars or something or 11 dollars. i forget the exact amount but I bought this little reflector deal, uh, which lets you mirror the iPad into your laptop. And you're probably already doing a mirroring program, I bet. Um, that way I can use it as a source for the live stream. I don't think my, my headset, my Bluetooth headset, will reach all the way to the scope. But I do think I will walk out to this I'm going to walk out to the scope and turn off the red light just so you can see um, but I don't think I think maybe my my voice will start dropping here turn this light off. and I'm just going to use my this is my my little flashlight my little flashlight here now I'm going to go back to the truck. I, I doubt if you can hear this Bluetooth headset while I'm out there. But I'm just curious. I'm curious if that Wise Cam 3 will, will work. Is that, is that live? Is it? Because right now... It has no light on it at all. Oh my goodness. There, that's pitch black. There is no light. So, so what that is right now is evidently the infrared source. Oh, I wish you could see that. How can I show you? That telescope is pitch black. How can I show you this over the live stream? Um, boy, do I have a way? Let me see. I don't think I do right now have a way to show you that that is what you're looking at there, the scope, that is pitch black. I tell you what I'll do. I mean, the only light is the mount, the red light on the mount. That's amazing. That's amazing. This this thing is apparently wow. So I am I am in pitch black. 
There is no light here. I mean, this light is the only light there is. That's amazing. Wow, so... I'm amazed. That Wise Cam 3 is remarkable. Um, it is basically looking at the telescope in absolute darkness. So I highly recommend it now. Wise Cam, W-Y-Z-E Cam, and I'll put a link in the description. Wise Cam 3, hook it to your iPhone or iPad, link it with your Wi-Fi. You've got to have Wi-Fi at your scope now. Uh, then reflect it using Reflector 4 into your uh, Windows PC. And now you have this ability to see the scope at night with no light on the scope. It's grand. All right. Well, uh, thanks a lot for tuning into this and for sharing this Emerald Hill Sky Skylet with us. And we'll see you in the next one. God bless. Good night.